Hi everyone, welcome to Central Life Online. We're starting a new series in the new year called It's Time. Pastor Ryan will be bringing that good word here shortly. We've got lots going on here at Central Life during the month of January and we want you to be aware of that. You can go to centrallife.org forward slash pray and you can learn about 21 days of prayer. You can learn about our praise party and the climax of our month and you'll hear more about this later is serve day. So keep that in mind and go to our website for information on all that's going on here. If you're a guest today, welcome to Central Life Online. We'd love to get to know you a little more and there's a place right on the screen where you can click the connection card button and let us know about you and any decisions you may make today in your growing relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm excited to help lead you now in prayer as we go into a vibrant and powerful time of worship. Will you join me? Father, thank you now for the joy of being in your presence through worship. We pray, Father, that what we hear now will stir our hearts, excite us, inspire us about the year ahead and our walk with you right now. Father, be with this time together today. May every heart come closer to you as a result. And we ask it in the power of Jesus' name, amen.
down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough then you came
Well, good morning, Central Life Church. It is a pleasure to be with you today, and uh, I am so excited to kick off a brand new year with you. And here we are, first Sunday of the year. Welcome to all of our Cocoa West family, our Oceanside family, our online family. Wherever you're coming to us from, we are just thrilled to worship with you today. In fact, why don't we all, here at Cocoa West, at Oceanside, and maybe even right there in your living room, why don't you just put your hands together and welcome the church family. Can you do that? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, those of you outside of this room, I mean, you, you, you cheered so loud I could hear you. So well done. All right. It's going to be a great day today. We are starting a brand new series called It's Time. It's Time. And, and we're going to walk through a variety of subjects this month. And I'm excited to tell you that the very first uh, thing we're going to talk about is prayer. In fact, today I've titled this sermon, It's Time to Pray. That's what we're going to talk about and uh, here's why. At Central Life Church, we believe that prayer is our first response, not our last resort. And because of that, we begin every year in this, in this church family praying together. And we are introducing to you, starting tomorrow on the 4th, January 4th, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And you've already heard in the welcome, and you'll hear more information uh, at the end of the service today about centrallife.org slash pray filled with resources for you, uh, whether you've been, been a praying person for a long time and, and maybe you practice the discipline of fasting in your life or maybe you know nothing about it. There are all kinds of resources there uh, no matter where you fit in the spectrum of prayer and fasting. So join us in that. Lots of great events. And we are taking the next three Mondays to pray together, 6.30 a.m. at our Cocoa West campus. And so we invite you to come and join us and, uh, and pray uh, for, for uh, really the presence of God to be um, not only just something we feel, but something that guides us and leads us into a fresh new year. And so... Uh, I want you also to know, if you say, man, pastor, I don't know if I can join you at 6.30 a.m. You've got other things going on. You got to get to work. Got to get this kids ready for school. We're going to be live streaming that. So join us online and pray with us from wherever you are. And some of you, it's not that. It is you don't get up at 6.30 a.m. And so um, do it anyway and turn the live stream on and pray from your bed if you have to. All right. Whatever you do, let's pray together. All right. So today I want to kind of set that up for you and talk to you about prayer and uh, the value of it. And, and I, I love to pray. It's a discipline in my life. It's something that um, uh, I can't imagine not participating in, an invitation from God to speak to me, uh, to clarify, to, to hear his voice, to gain perspective. It's a valuable thing. And today I hope to introduce it to you in a way that you can, you can really uh, prepare well for the next 21 days. That's my goal, is to introduce the topic of prayer to you in a way that says, you know what, I needed that reminder, or I just needed to learn some of those things so that I can approach God with confidence, and I can, I can enter into his presence expectant and anticipating to hear from him. And so I want to talk to you about names today. I want to talk to you about the power of name. Names are important, aren't they? When you choose a name uh, to name your child, you just don't want to, you just don't want to blow it, do you? You don't you want to pick a name that you go, ooh, we shouldn't have gone with that because it rhymed with something we weren't thinking about. And then they became the joke in junior high, right? Anybody have that happen? Like your name just rhymed with something that wasn't pleasant, you know? Names are important. Some names are just difficult. Some people have names that you go, why did their parents name them that? 
you know, not because it rhymed with something that became a joke, but because you go, nobody can pronounce it. Nobody can spell it. Nobody, my mother has a name like that. My mom's name is Danae, and I could just tell you she's been called all kinds of things outside of her actual name, Danae. And, uh, and there's an apostrophe in there. And then, and then she decided, I don't know why, but her and dad decided to just, they would name their firstborn with the same kind of way, a name with an apostrophe that no one could figure out and pronounce. And, and my sister, Melissa, and uh, she's been called all kinds of names like M. Lisa and uh, Melissa and May Lisa. And I mean, you name it, she's, it's just been mispronounced, you know? And you know anybody like that? I'll tell you what's fun, what's really been fun over the last several years and, and being, doing ministry life with Pastor Marnus and Leandri is um, going to Starbucks with Pastor Marnus. Pastor Marnus at our Oceanside location, he, he, can, he can tell you all the fun things he's been called at a Starbucks uh, establishment by a barista. It's amazing. It's, um, it's actually amazing some of the things that he's been called. I tried to convince him early on. I said, why don't you just tell him your name is Marcus? Just change the N to a C. They won't mess that up. And, and you know what he said? That's not my name. It's not my name. And, and if I'm going to change my name, why not just change it to something uh, more exciting? And so he began to tell Starbucks baristas his name was Johnny Bravo, and they didn't mess his name up anymore. Anymore. It was perfect after that. There was a day we went into Starbucks. I'll just tell you one. He can tell you the others. There's a day we go in and, and Marnus, we're, we're all there. We order our drinks and, and, and the drinks are getting made. And, and the barista calls out and says, uh, 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 Tony, Tony, coffee for you. You know, and of course, none of us are like, we don't know, no Tony in our group, you know. Uh, but sure enough, it was Marnus. It was Marnus who, who is now Tony. I don't, we don't, we're Still trying to figure out how that happened. So anyway, <laughs> names are very, very important, aren't they? Do you agree? Names are just important. And, and I want to talk to you about that subject because um, how many times have you have maybe stopped to contemplate this? Um, when we pray, it's important the name we use. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And you know what the scripture tells us about the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus, every demon shudders and bows at the name of Jesus. Can you just praise God for that today? That the enemy who wants to destroy your life, when you speak the name of your Savior, of your Lord, of your friend Jesus, they bow. They shudder in fear. You know, the scriptures tell us that in the Ten Commandments, some of the earliest um, instructions from God to humanity about what it looks like to live in unity with him. They, right there in the Ten Commandments, what does it say? Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't misuse. You know what sometimes people think? They think that, that taking the Lord's name in vain is just cussing with his name in it. And that's actually not what it is. No, it, I mean, I wouldn't suggest that you do that, but, but it's actually much deeper than that. And God would speak to humanity and say, listen, my name is so precious. My name is so valuable. My name is so important. Don't ever speak using my name and disassociate it with its power. That's the misuse of God's name. And, and God's name's important. And so when we pray, I, I want to appeal to you today. It is important to use the name of God properly and with adoration, and with great expectation. And some of us today, you know what I think we need? We just need reminded of the name of God. Who is God? And what does it mean to use his name? Jesus said that when you pray, you should say, Lord, Father in heaven, hallowed, or how great is your name. How great is your name? And so I want to talk to you about that today. Um, and, and I want to just give you this thought right off the start. And it's a question. And here's my question for you. Why should God answer your prayers? You know, I told you it's time to pray. We've got a whole plan for the month ahead and how we want to begin the, the year really in the presence of God and speaking to God, crying out to God and, and asking God to meet us where we are. But why should he answer your prayers? You say, well, you know, hey, 2020, you know, with all the, with all the things that happened back there in 2020, you know, I, I went to church. I mean, I, even church online, I was there. I was there. I was good attendance. I think maybe because of my attendance, I think maybe God might answer my prayer, you know. 
And I would say to you that, you know, righteous living has consequences and so does unrighteous living. But that's not the complete answer as to why God should answer your, your prayer. You know, some of you might say, you know what? I just look at my life, pastor, and I realize I have, I have such huge problems that I'm facing in my life right now. And I look at other people's life and I think they don't need, they don't need God's intervention like I need it right now. And, and maybe even you would say, you know, not that I always have needed it or not that I believe I always would, but the problems of my life today, I maybe because of the unforeseen or unfortunate circumstances of life, you might even feel a little bit entitled to go, I think God should answer my prayer because it's harder for me just to live normally and do life than it is for other people. And I would just tell you, I, there's really nothing in God's word that would tell you that because life is more difficult for you today that God should show up more in your life than he should someone else's. And some of you just go, I don't know, maybe just the longevity of walking with him. And I, maybe I, you know, I look around and I think, boy, people just don't take God seriously. And boy, there's a maturity in my life that maybe, maybe just the things I say, maybe I've got a little bit of, maybe God's blessing and favor on my life because of the, the long road I've walked with him is just maybe evidence that maybe we're just a little tighter. We're a little bit, we're, me and God, we're just a little bit tighter, you know. And I would just tell you, no, I don't, I don't think that's it. And, and so I want to answer this question for you. And it's very, here's where it begins. Here's where the, God answering your prayer begins with this right here. God answers prayers based on his character. God answers prayers. God meets needs. God shows up in your life, not based on your character, but based on his character. And he wants your character to reflect his character. And he wants you to grow. And he wants you to mature. And he wants you to live right. And he wants you to show up. And he wants you to be committed to what you've committed to. But you can't miss this. He doesn't show up in your world because of you. He shows up in, in your world because of him and his character. And I just want to appeal to you today. He has not been silent all over the scriptures, all over the Bible. People have prayed to God and there are recorded prayers. And you know what they all include? Oh God, you are so great. And then they fill in the blanks of God's attributes and they talk about his character and they cry out to God, not just because they have needs and not just because they want connection with God, but because of who he is. And let me show you, I want to show you today one of the most famous places in all the Bible that is just power packed with God's name. It's just full of God's name all over it. And can I tell you, God decided just in his, in his will and his sovereignty and in his, because he can, he decided to define himself in hundreds of ways to you and I. And I just want to show you a snapshot. I've got eight of them for you today in one passage. Look at this. Psalm chapter 23, written by King David. He is one of the most famous psalms in all of Scripture. More music has been created out of this psalm than any other. And it says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul, and he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Verse four, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, and that's the, and you maybe have read this in another translation, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Continues on, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows and surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is just packed full of God's character and his names and his characteristics. And I wanna show them to you and I'll tell you, here's my why in showing them to you. God will answer your prayers based on his character and you need to understand his character. You need to know his name. You need to know the name of God, not just God, but you need to know it based on who he is. And I wanna walk you through that because I think this could be a roadmap for you over the next 21 days. Where you could, there might be a few of God's characteristics right here in his word that speak louder to you in this season than others. 
There just might be one or two or three that you go, wow, there's a lot there, but there's this one. There's this one name of God. I needed that. I needed to appeal to God in my prayers based on that character trait that he has. And so I hope that you'll, you'll take these in and, and maybe write them down and, and we'll move fairly quickly through them because there's a lot of them, but write them down and go and return to this. And so here we go. Number one, you got to know this. God says that he is my shepherd and the Hebrew actual word, I'm going to give it to you for each one, is Jehovah Reha. The Lord is my shepherd. And you know what this is in the Hebrew? It's actually the word for pastor. God says, I'm your pastor. And you know, for those of you who call, call me your pastor, I'm honored. I just want you to know, he's the, he's the shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. He's the one in charge. He's the pastor to your soul. He wants to lead you and he wants to feed you in all the things that are gonna nourish your soul. And I'm telling you, you, you gotta begin to look at God in that way and, and, and you gotta understand the nature of who he is He's got good things for you. Now, I would tell you it's expounded. He's going to show you all the other things, the words and names of God and characteristics of God. I want to show you there's seven more. They, they are the how behind his shepherding. How does he shepherd? How does he do it? Let me show you. Number two is right here in the same verse. It says, I lack nothing. He's my shepherd. I lack nothing. And that is the, that is the name provider. He's your provider. Jehovah Jireh. He is the one who's produced all the provision in your life. In fact, when he is the Lord of your life, you can be confident. It literally means you will not lack. You won't lack. You will have what you need. And I think one of the most beautiful things about how God does this is he puts you in families. He puts you in families. You know what those families are? The house of God, the church. He puts you, you know how God provides for you? He puts you in relationship with the people sitting around you right now. And that's how he provides. He is Jehovah Jireh. Number three, number three, he is my peace. Jehovah Shalom. And look what it says here. He makes me lie down. He makes me. So you go, well, that seems a little bit forceful. Well, you make your kids go to bed at night. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, be, you better get in that bed. You better stay in that bed. And you better get some sleep because it's good for you, kid. Right? You know, God, maybe it's not exactly that way. But God makes me lie down where? In green pastures because he's my pastor and he's my shepherd. And he's going to take me to places of peace. He's going to let me lie down. He's going to let me feel it and experience it and have the things and nutrients that I need and to feed off of that, that land. And he says he leads me beside quiet waters. You know, he didn't lead you beside waves. He didn't take you to, you know, the storms of life. He takes you through them and he leads you to quiet places. He's your peace. You know what Jesus said? You go read it in John 14. Jesus said, don't be afraid and don't be troubled. I have a peace for you. And you know what I call it? I call it out of this world peace. Because he said, you'll never find it in this world. You'll only find it from me, Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace. Some of you need this deeply right now. It's how he wants to pastor your soul. The fourth is this. He is my healer. Jehovah Rapha. The ref he, verse three, says he refreshes my soul. And this is synonymous with the word restores. He restores it. He takes what was out of order. He puts it back in order. The literal meaning is, is that God takes me back to the point of my departure. He takes me back to the start. He takes me back and he puts it all in order. You know what? And healing and God's work and God's will is physical, but it doesn't stop there. God's healing in your life is where, wherever you are diseased. Wherever there's disease in your life. You know, I say it to you that way to just be a, an example to you. God cares about all the places of your life where there is disorder and dis-ease. Wherever you don't have ease today, he is your healer. 
He wants to put it back in order. Oh my goodness. I, I just, I tell you, as I, as I walk through this, you know what happens to me? It's God brings all these things into my memory uh, of what I've studied in the life of Jesus because there's a, there, are, there are just tons of moments in when Jesus clearly and specifically demonstrated the authority and the power that he carried in his name to be the healer, to be the healer. I mean, there was a, there was a woman who walked, who walked by one day on a Sabbath as he was teaching and she was bent over. We have, boy, we've studied it together as a church family before. And it says that he went and he put his hand on her. And when he put his hand on her, she was bent over at the, at the waist and she was stuck there for 14 years. And when he put his hand on her, the healer, she, her whole back realigned and restraightened was put. And it was the same word for order, put it all back in order. That's what God does. Some of you, you know what's going to happen in 2021? You're going to pursue the heart of God. You're going to declare that he's your healer and he's going to put back in order the things that were diseased in the year behind you. That's what's going to happen for some of you. Number five is this, my righteousness, that's who he is. He's my righteousness. Jehovah, this is a, this is a tricky one. This is a tricky, this is a tricky Hebrew word right here. It means righteousness, sidkenu. He is my righteousness. Verse three says, he guides me along the right paths. For what? For what? For his name's sake. Because his name is important. And his name leads to the places that produce righteousness in your life. And I'm just praising God today because I don't stand in my own righteousness any longer. I have a new position and a new standing. It is called the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And can I tell you that when you pray to God and you say, God, I, I need you in my life. You know, what, you know what happens? You're praying to the Father in the name of Jesus and Jesus is interceding on your behalf. He is representing you. When he hears you, he sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus. He didn't, see, he didn't see you where you stand on your own. He sees you standing in the position of his son, Jesus. And he knows how to, he knows how to get you to the right place. Can I tell you? He knows the path. He knows where it leads. And the sixth one is this. He is my present help. And this is your two for one for the day. Two Two names of God, two characteristics of God in this verse, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah as Ez, Ezer. And it's this, even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are, what's the word, with me. You are present. You will not leave me. This is, this is the characteristic that is completely embodied by the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. He is present with you. He's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. He is your advocate. He is your friend. Jesus said he would lead you into all truth. That is what God does. He leads you into all truth. And the result of it is comfort sets in. Comfort. You know why? This expression of the rod and the staff, the rod and the staff of the shepherd, the pastor, is not simply just to discipline sheep, although they did have to do that quite a bit. Um, they have to discipline sheep, but it's to count them, to protect them and defend them. It's to rescue them. It's, it's to bring comfort. It's the strong arm of God to do what only he can do in your life and to put you in a place of comfort, rest. Seventh one, my defender. That's who God is. Jehovah Nisi, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. How many of you today are grateful that God gives you a place to sit even while there's a fight going on? God has given you a place to sit and enjoy at his table and to be counted as part of the family and he is fighting for you. You know what the literal meaning of this is, defender? Just to give you a, a broader view of it in, the, in Hebrew, it means that he gives you his standard of victory and nothing can overpower that. His defense is his standard of victory in your life. Some of you today, some of you today, you need to trade your standard of victory for God's standard of victory. You need to start looking at what you're walking through and you feel defeat, but you are alive 
You still have calling on your life. You still have purpose. God's promises haven't ended. And you looked at it like defeat. I really failed in this. But you have already been traded. You've been traded from unrighteousness to righteousness. You are standing in the perfection of Jesus. And I'm telling you, you need an adjustment of what victory really is. You have the standard of God's victory. He will allow you to sit at peace and eat at the table while the fight continues to wage. And I'm telling you, as long as you're picking up utensils and trying to use them like swords and you try to take over the fight, God will rest. He'll go, yo, you don't want my defense. You want to take this on yourself? You think your willpower is strong enough? I'm not going to, I'm not going to prevent you from using your free will. It's a gift that I've given you. But if you'll sit down and you'll eat the meal I prepared for you, you won't, you won't have to worry about what's trying to steal from your plate. The last one is this, number eight, my sanctifier. Jehovah in Kadesh, my sanctifier. You know what sanctification is? Here's what it says, you anoint my head with oil. That's God coming over to the table and pouring his oil over your life and saying, he is distinguishing you. He is setting you apart. And he is saying, you know what? This is very interesting because anointing in the scriptures is always associated with the will or, or the Holy Spirit of God coming over your life. But as David writes this, and you really get the full picture of Psalm 23 and what he's expressing, he's writing from some of his own experience. He's writing from what it looks like when kings go from place to place and special guests are come in, coming in and being honored and that sort of thing. And that's what this is. This is anointing of the special guest of the house the one sitting at the table who's being completely defended, the one there who's experiencing God's comfort and God's guidance from his presence, the one who is actually sitting there in the presence of God or on the green hillside and, and along the quiet water. This is the person that God says, you know what? We've walked through all these things together and you've trusted me as, as your source and your provision and as your shepherd and as your healer and all of these things. And guess what? It has... It has left a mark on you. You are set apart. You're set apart. And this is just a fresh reminder to you, church. You have calling on your life. You have a calling on your life. And you need to pursue God. And you need to talk to God. And his name is important. And you know why? You know why it's so important to understand these names and to lean into this and to press into this? Here's why. Because God answers prayers based on his character. That's why. Do you know him? Have you leaned into his character? Have you trusted him? Have you given him your whole heart so that you can experience all of these amazing things that he wants? Can, I, can you just let this internalize for a moment? I want to invite you to stand to your feet right now and I want to pray with you. I mean, the sermon's called, It's Time to Pray. We ought to pray. We ought to pray together with this in mind to understand today that it's not because, it's not because um, I was loud. Here I am in church and I'm gonna pray. Pastor's gonna invite us to pray. I'm gonna pray so loud. Everybody in the room hears me, you know. I'm gonna, it's not because you were so eloquent with your words. It's not because you think that you've got it. You've got the formula down. If I just do these three things or I say these six things or, or this is the way I pray and if I do it at this time, at this exact moment. No, 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 it's, not, it's none of those things. Do what you need to do to connect to the Father but never replace, never replace your motive for prayer with this right here. He answers because of who he is in your life. He answers because of his greatness because of his character. And he wants to do that for you. He wants to hear you call on his name, on his name. And you know what? Maybe one of the most beautiful things of all of this is, is verse six, which I kind of, you know, I didn't include that all the way through the end. And I just want to read it to you without it on the screen. If you just, maybe if you just even close your eyes and just let this let this be poured over you today. The conclusion of Psalm 23 is this. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I mean, can I, can I just, just, just think about this? Let this sink in. Would you like that kind of confidence? 
as you approach the presence of God? I know who my God is. I know how he answers prayers. I know how to call out his name. And as I do, I can declare that surely the goodness and love of God will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can I tell you, that's called salvation. That's the salvation of God. That's his pastoring in your life. That's his leading in your life. That's his healing in your life. That's his peace in your life. That's all these things that we've just looked at in your life being felt and walked out. That's what salvation looks like. It's God present with you in relationship with you. And he tells us that he does that through faith. Today, I wanna invite some of you to place your faith in Jesus Christ for the very first time. This Psalm is about his character, his nature, our God, our savior, that, that to live in God's goodness and in God's house forever is to receive by faith what Jesus has done for you to be all these things that we just talked about. And you'd say, pastor, I want that. I don't have that. I've never expressed my faith that way and anchored my hope to him. And I wanna invite you to do that today. If that's you, in this moment, while everybody else has got their heads bowed and eyes closed, we pray in this moment, you say, pastor, that's me. You can lift a hand wherever you're at. Myself and our pastors, our team are there to, to, to serve you and say, pastor, that's me. Whether you're here at Coco or Oceanside, online, online, say, pastor, that's me, pray with me. Would you just, if that's you, all these, these people are ready to take that step, would you just pray th these words? Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus today. I thank you for what I've learned about who you are, who he is, a God with unmatched character. Could you just tell him, just express your heart to him that way today? Say, thank you, Jesus, for offering a relationship with me to be my shepherd, to be my peace, to be my healer. Today, I wanna make you the Lord of my life. That simply means I want you in control, God, and I want to learn to walk step by step with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Ryan, for bringing the word so faithfully and inspiring us to the great days ahead in 2021. If you have been touched by what has been said today, we want you to use that connection card that you can click on the button right here on the screen. Tell us what God is doing in your heart right now because we would love to pray for you. So keep that in mind. Very important that you allow others to pray for you and even connect with you to help you take your next step in your growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And as always here at Central Life, we end our services in a spirit of worship through generosity. And we would like to encourage you to understand that there is freedom in generosity. When we obey God first and we're generous with other people, we want your household to be blessed this year. And so you can do uh, your giving right here online. You can mail a check in to the physical address on the screen. But most of all, we want you to honor God and for God to bless you mightily in the year to come. So thanks for being with us again today for Church Online. And we'll see you right back here next week.